Hey troops, John just made that back with the largest comparison I've ever done. This time I'm comparing the main vehicles from the Rebellion Navy. We have the X-Wing Starfighter, Gold Leader's Y-Wing Starfighter, the B-Wing and the A-Wing Starfighter. So the set number for the set, and we're going to try and power through this. <gasps> X-Wing Starfighter 9493 ages 8-14 comes with 560 pieces and retail for £50 or $60 in 2012 so it's the most expensive out of these sets. Gold Leaders Wyoming Starfighter set number 9495 ages 8-14 comes with 458 pieces and is retailing for £50 or $50 in 2012 as well. The B-Wing set number 75054 ages 8-14 comes with 448 pieces and was retailing for forty pounds, sorry, fifty pounds or fifty dollars in twenty fourteen. And in twenty thirteen, we got the A Wing Starfighter set number seven five zero zero three. Eighty seven to twelve comes one hundred seventy seven pieces and was retailing for twenty five pounds or twenty five dollars in twenty thirteen. Woo! Okay, so today I'm doing the large comparison I've ever done with the main vehicles from the Rebellion uh, uh, Navy. So, yeah, these are all the latest versions of these sets. We have had, I believe, one or two more versions of the Y-Wing. I know we've got one turn six and we've got a UCS one, I'm not sure. We've had, like, a few different versions of the X-Wing because it is a very iconic vehicle. We've had one, no, we had two, sorry, proper versions of the B-Wing before, not including the UCS one. And I think we've had, like, a few different A-Wings, although we don't really have them that often as a singular set. Normally, they come with other sets. And, in fact, uh, there, there's a new A-Wing coming with, of course, the... Uh, Darth Vader's TIE Advanced thing later this year, but until then, these are the latest version of each set, and I just thought it would be kind of fun to compare each and every one to see which is the best. This one is the most expensive and does have the most pieces. This one is, of course, the cheapest. I can't reach it, by the way. <laughs> this one is, of course, the cheapest and has the least pieces, but we're going to go through then and decide which one is the best military vehicle when it comes to, you know, star fighting or something. The X-Wing, the Y-Wing, the B-Wing, or the A-Wing. Alright, so moving on to the minifigures, I dread to think how long this comparison is going to be, so we're going to try and power through this. Each of these sets doesn't come with like a, a really large amount of minifigures, and of course they are fairly, I would say, average price sets. You wouldn't expect a massive amount, but in all honesty, I would say, funny enough, the X-Wing actually has probably the most boring minifigures, which is something you wouldn't really expect, since it's probably the most main vehicle within the new trilogy. Uh, but, I mean, you've got Luke Skywalker here, of course, we've got, um, I'm afraid I can't remember the name, but he is actually like a different, uh, I was about to say soldier, a different pilot, like a specific one we did see, maybe Porkins or something, I'm afraid I don't know, but he does come with a different colour helmet and face print, which is pretty nice, you know, it's nice to get different pilots, even if they're not particularly special. r 2 d is something we've seen many times before, and we've got a newer, better version of him. We've also seen us draw another set, I can't remember which one, but I know we saw him in another set, and in fact, probably two more sets, but still, at the time, this headpiece was new, and of course, you got the same in the Y-Wing, so it's very nice, and uh, I did say in the review, which by the way you can check out the reviews to all of these down in the description. I did say that these both these headpieces are pretty cool. We saw them in fact in other sets, not as headpieces on astromech droids, but in new pieces, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so actually I would say this is the most boring thing many figures, so I'd say this probably one probably loses the like last. With the Y Wing we have we have Princess Leia, a variant we've never seen before. This is from the medal ceremony, and of course we have Gold Leader, which uh, I believe we did see. I mean he didn't really have a name, just Gold Leader is what he said, and of course I think unfortunately, spoiler alert, he did die. But that's a that's a bummer. Um, anyway, so this is very nice. It does go well with if you uh, remember I can't remember the books are called the, the encyclopedia or something. Uh, there were a couple of books where you got the Luke Skywalker with the Han Solo for the medal ceremony, so it's nice the fact that we get her with them. So you can make the entire set if you've got the Y-Wing and those two books, that's pretty cool. The A-Wing, I'm on the fence about whether it would win between this or the B-Wing. I'm probably swaying towards the B-Wing. The A-Wing, though, however, does have this new pilot um, with the new helm, which is more accurate, which is very nice. In fact, we didn't really see the A-Wings, in fact, I think at all in episodes 4 or 5, I think. I don't, really saw, I don't think we saw them in episode 5. We saw them in episode 6, really. Um, one of the most famous scenes with an A-Wing was really when the A-Wing went and destroyed the um, station, like the, 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 I can't remember what it's called, the command center of the Super Star Destroyers. That's probably the most famous part we saw, but of course, you do see them a lot in Star Wars Rebels. That's the main thing. So it's kind of surprising. I thought the X-Wing was invented long before that, and it kind of begs the question why the hell they ever, like, you know, how the hell they were using A-Wings in episode 6, but they had them in Star Wars Rebels, so I don't understand why they aren't using prototype X-Wings, but that's beside the point. Uh, anyway, so they are pretty nice minifigures. We do have, a, I would say, a better Admiral Akbar. I mean, technically, this is a different variant, but I prefer the one we got in The Force Awakens, and I'd probably use that one if you want to use it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a pretty cool one, and he is fairly rare. He doesn't come in that many sets, so it's pretty nice we got him. This Han Solo is pretty good, and I think it is the best one we've got to date, so that is pretty nice. You know, just different printing, nothing massively special, just nice. This is a new exclusive minifigure. I'm not sure we've got maybe in hot, some Hoth sets. I can't entirely remember. 
<coughs> sorry. Um, but nonetheless, this is a new Admirals, and we don't get that many Admirals for the Rebellion, so it's pretty nice we've got him. We normally get them for the Empire, we get officers and stuff. We've got him, uh, something nub, I can't remember his name, but you see him actually in Battlefront, is where I remember him from. We'll also see, of course, in Episode 6 with um, Lando and the Millennium Falcon, uh, so it's kind of odd why we get him in this set, but nonetheless, we did get him in the same set in 26, so I guess he has something to do with the set. I guess it's just cool to get him in a set, you know. And of course, this pilot with the new helmet as well. So, very, very nice collection of minifigures. I suppose, if I really had to choose, I really want to break it down, which one I think is the best for minifigure selection. While this one technically is the only one that comes with four, these minifigures are pretty boring. In fact, actually, probably the worst minifigures. They're not bad inherently, but we've already got a Luke. We've got R2-D2. We've got to see him again, and yeah, he's cool, but he's just a pilot, so who really cares that much? But still, I'd probably say, and it's pretty close, I'm going to go with the B-Wing for the best minifigures. The A-Wing does have some pretty nice ones here, but seems that we do technically get Amor Akbar before, and I think the one that Force Awakens is better, and Han Solo, yeah, he's uh, the best version, but we do get a previous version, which, you know, wasn't that bad, you know, it definitely wasn't that much better, so it's not the biggest deal. Nonetheless, I'm going to go with the B-Wing with the best minifigures, of course, because, I mean, it is the technically the most newest, but they're all released around the general same area, so I don't just have to say, like, oh, yeah, it's got the best printing because it's the newest. Well, they were all kind of released around the same sort of years, so still. That is it, then. That Wow, that took way too long. We're going to try and really sh course, shut this down. I'm going to fail with the sets themselves. All right, so moving on to the sets themselves. This is going to be quite difficult for me to do, but still, bear with me. So... These sets, as I said, were all released around the same sort of time. These two are both 2012, 2014, and 2013. So all around the same sort of time. So you'd kind of expect them to have the same type of features. You know, flick fire missiles, there's spring loaded shooter stuff, but yeah. Alright, so, each of these vehicles doesn't really come with any particular special features that you wouldn't expect with these vehicles. I mean, of course, the X-Wing main feature opens up, very nice, got landing gear, I believe this and the A-Wing are the only ones that have landing gear, but that's just because they're the only ones who need it, really nothing too special there. Weight-wise, they're all pretty much the same, apart from, of course, the A-Wing, which obviously is considerably smaller in every way, but still, I would say in some ways the A-Wing is probably the worst prize set, which sounds odd because it's the smallest and it's the cheapest, but in terms of how many pieces it's got, it's got 177 and it does cost 25 pounds. 20 pounds is a lot better. In fact, maybe even 15 would be brilliant. Um, but I mean, when you got this, which was 50 pounds, it had more than 500 pieces, which is very nice. And just all these other stuff are a lot similar to the actual price range, whereas the A Wing is just pretty far off, to be honest with you. Still, it is only £25, so it's not the biggest deal. In all honesty, I would not get two of those for the same price as one of these, or one of these, blah, blah, blah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, with the B-Wing, I'll try to pick this up, I'm really stretching here. Anyway, with the B-Wing, it's a pretty cool set. Again, I'm not going to try and review this, uh, the reviews are down below, but effectively what I said was, it's a pretty cool set. Unfortunately, though, I prefer the Turn 6 one in many ways. By the way, I'm sorry if it's dusty, these are all in my shelf for a while. Anyway, I prefer the Turn 6 one because, well, it just felt bulkier. I mean, even though I'm not saying this one actually is flimsy in terms of you could hold it by this wing and it's not going to, you know, fall apart. It is technically sturdy, but it doesn't look that sturdy. The other one was more brick built, like, and I mean actual, like, bricks in terms of not plates, like actual, you know, large... Uh, two by fours and stuff like that, and I, it, just, it just looked bulky. It looked more impressive to me, and I prefer the Turn Six one. Also, there's a bit of nostalgia for me. But even so, I just prefer the Turn Six one. And well, this is cool and everything, and I suppose guess it's good if you haven't never had a B wing. But I prefer the Turn Six one. I'm sorry to say it, and I was a little disappointed when we got the pictures of these, and we saw it was not nearly as good as that one. But still, pretty nice. We've got some spring loaded shooters here. Uh, I believe this is the only set to actually come with spring loaded shooters. I'm not entirely sure. I think obviously because they only brought them out in 20. 14? 2013? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, all, all the rest of the sets have spring loaded sh I mean, sorry, uh, flick fire missiles. Uh, apart from this one, does this have it? No, it doesn't have it. Oh, <laughs> how about that? It actually doesn't have spring loaded. Uh, so what are you scoring to that? It doesn't have flick fire missiles, but all the others do. That one does, and this one does as well. The Y Wing, I do very much like the design of it. I really, really, really wanted the Trans 6 one, but unfortunately, I never got it. Still, this is a very nice addition as well. I remember the Trans 6 one being £40 as opposed to 50 but that's beside the point. This is a very nice one then. I'm very much enjoying this. I would say this is probably the best design I've had, although we don't have that many designs for the Y Wing. From what I remember, I think there's like two or so other designs, and not including the UCS one, of course. In fact, ha! Oh no, apart from the A-Wing, sorry. Oh, I just realised that every single set here, apart from the A-Wing, has a UCS version of it. So that's pretty cool. Maybe I should compare the UCS ones. Don't leave that down in the comments. But that was a joke. Don't leave it down in the comments because I don't have those sets, okay? I have to keep repeating that. But nonetheless... So these sets then overall are pretty cool. As I said before, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't recommend getting two of those for the same price as one of these or the other one of that. 
Not because it's inherently a bad set, for what it is, I think it's a really good set, and I really enjoy the A-Wing. I'm a little skeptical of why they use A-Wings and Rebels and not prototype X-Wings, because every other source ever, even if it's not canon, every other source, and it makes sense to use prototype X-Wings, not A-Wings. A-Wings weren't around then, but nonetheless. Anyway, so yeah, um, that is more or less it then to the set. Again, I'm going to really try to push through this. I'm sorry if I'm talking way too much, but hey, it's my channel. I'll do what I like. I'm sorry, guys. I, I didn't mean that. Anyway, that is it. Let us go now into the instructions and include this comparison. And now onto the instruction manuals, the part of the comparison no one actually cares about. Really not much to say there. Of course, the A-Wing instruction manual is the smallest, as you expect. Looking in the back here, again, these, uh, this and the Y-Wing are from the same year. In fact, from the same line. I think they're from the Winter Line? Yeah, I think the Winter Line. So yeah, of course, with the TIE Fighter as well. Which, until the Force Awakens one, in my opinion, was the best TIE Fighter. You've got some pretty cool art here of the other sets. All of which, apart from that one, I have reviewed. So check them out on my channel. And of course, this is back when we've got little comics. Remember that? Uh, Oh, they were little comics. I kind of miss them. They were pretty terrible, but I still kind of miss them. And yeah, just going over the features in the set. Again, if you want to see them, check out my review. Really not a massive amount of features, but still nothing more than the uh, usual. That kind of stuff. And of course, you can... That's the reason, by the way, you uh, they give you two different joys and two different pilots. The fact you could like uh, change this around and put a different joy in there and make it like red 6 as opposed to red 5. That's the same feature we got in the um, 26 one. 26? Turn 6 one. Alright, the B-Wing. Funny enough, this instruction manual feels a little more papery, if that's easy to explain. But really Again, nothing to show here. The exact same art we got because they are from the same line, so nothing too special. I'm pretty sure this one is slightly smaller. I mean, it does have less pieces, so that's good stuff. The B-Wing is definitely the largest and is the most sturdy, despite the fact that technically the A, sorry, the uh, X-Wing has the most pieces. We have every single set from the summer 2014 line. Very nice, and of course all the minifigures as well, which were very, very good. All good stuff. We got a code. No, sorry, we didn't have a code by the way in this one. I think we got codes in the larger sets, or I can't remember. It's just it's hard to remember these things. But this, I believe, is the largest set then. And of course, you got that. Unfortunately, with Channel Six One, you did get a um, stand, like this yellow stand, which I thought was very, very cool. Uh, which came with the set, which you literally could stand it up, like you could have it uh, up ways. Is that a thing? Up ways? I don't know. And it would just go like that. So unfortunately, you do not get that with the Channel Fourteen One. Man, I'm jumbling my words now. Okay, the A-Wing, the smallest one, of course. We have the Lego Club on the back and the minifigures. I guess the uh, Rancor counts as a minifigure. What was it? What do they call them? Big figures? Big figs. I don't know. And we've got the code here. That, oh, I remember this. This was the code that was the exact same one on every single instruction manual, which didn't make any sense, but nonetheless. Uh, so it's pretty cool stuff. Really not much to say here. Amarat Bar came with a cup, by the way, so that's very nice. And of course, most of these minifigures came with weapons, but yeah. The instruction manual, who really cares? I guess the A-Wing, no, sorry, the B-Wing's the best, but no one cares at all. I don't even know why I compare these, quite frankly, but I guess the B-Wing wins with instructions. So if you buy your sets for instruction manuals, definitely buy the B-Wing, absolutely, because that's why everyone buys their sets for some reason. Anywho, let's go now and conclude this to see which set I would recommend above all others in the Rebellion Navy. So thank you guys for watching this comparison. I've actually no idea how long it was, but it was almost definitely too long. My camera's saying I've been recording for half an hour, so let's hope not. Anyway, so all of these sets, as I have said, are very good in my personal opinion, and are the uh, latest versions of all of them, although in my opinion not the best versions of all of them. I would probably say this is the best version of the X-Wing, although the Tan 6 one for me does have a lot of nostalgia, and I do like that set. Leave down in the comments, actually, which one do you like more, this or Tan 6 one, because I'm genuinely curious, because I found it hard. This, I'd probably say, is the best one, although Tan 6, two, two, six one, again, was also very good, and I very, very much wanted that. This, I would definitely say, is probably the best version yet. We had some different versions with slightly different colours, not the red, but red is my favourite colour, as you probably guessed from my channel, quite frankly, and all the text I have is red, but still. And the B-Wing, I've just got to say, it is not the best version, I'm sorry, it is just not. The Turn 6 one was far superior, and I very much enjoyed that one, and I just realised all of these came out in Turn 6, apart from the A-Wing, which I believe the most recent one was in Turn 9, with the Mon Calamari set. Actually, no, it might have been Turn 6, I don't remember. I can't remember. These might have all come out in Turn 6 before, but still. The point is they always generally release these sort of sets around the same sort of time, so it's easy to compare. Right then, which one is the best set? Well, since I'm doing four sets, which by the way, I can do, feel free to leave down in the comments uh, any like multiple sets. It doesn't just have to be two. I mean, granted, if you want to leave down like, you know, ten Death Stars, I'm, I may need some more space, but nonetheless, 
Um, yeah, so which one is the best? Well, I'm going to go down in order. The worst one, I'm going to say, is probably the B-Wing. There is nothing inherently wrong with it, but just the fact that I think the Titan 6 one was pretty better in a lot of ways. And the minifigures definitely do are a big plus to the B-Wing. I very much like the minifigures from there. But then they're considering that you can't really use them that much. They're not, like, really usable. But, of course, that's just a thing with all these sets. Unfortunately, I'm just going to mark it down as the worst out of these four. And, yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, the A-Wing probably then would be next. Again, nothing inherently wrong with it. I much very much enjoy it. But partially because, well, it should have been a little cheaper. And, I mean, yes, okay, now you probably could, couldn't get it any cheaper than 25 Probably, in fact, be more than that. But at the time, it should have been cheaper. And I think you could have found it a bit cheaper in 2013 if you really tried. Uh, although, there is a plus the fact it just comes by itself. Because that is pretty rare. Normally, you get it with other sets. And I do like the fact, you know, you can just buy different things. Because some people like the sets where you buy, you know, a multi-pack almost. Like, you get multiple sets. I'm kind of more partial to the ones where you just get little sets of little things. Mainly because that means, you know, you've got more choice. At the end of the day, they shouldn't ramp up the prices of both of the individual sets, you know, just because they can. They should make it the same. But, you know, I like the fact that you can buy the individual if you really want to, you know. So, yeah. But, it, I, for the one we're seeing in the new sets coming out later this year, I'm on the fence about which one is better, really. Because, I mean, this one is very simplistic. But the new one is very accurate. So, I don't know. Uh, next then would probably be the Y-Wing because it's a very cool set. I do like the design of it very much and it is a, the stripped, of course, stripped down version of the Clone Wars one which is meant to have its design. I think it's very nicely done despite how many pieces it has. It's not like UCS. It does have a lot of detail up here and I'm very, very much liking it. And then, of course, the winner would be the legendary X-Wing. There really is not a massive amount I can say about the X-Wing other than the fact it's really, really cool because, quite frankly, I don't need to say that much. The X-Wing... Uh, of course, it's very, very iconic. One of the most iconic sets in the entire Star Wars trilogy, or, sorry, you know, saga. And just, it's so incredibly awesome. In fact, one of my favourite sets from the new trilogy, from The Force Awakens, is Poe Dameron's X-Wing. I know not a lot of people like it, but I really love it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, the X-Wing definitely takes it. There is just no choice. It just does. Even the minifigures aren't that great. It's just, it's the X-Wing. Come on. And I think it's the best version, in my opinion. Although I'm pretty partial to the Town 6 version. And also, I'm pretty partial to the Poe Dameron's one. And also, the new Resistance one that's coming out later this year as well. So, quite frankly, which is your favourite X-Wing? Including the Force Awakens ones. Which is your favourite X-Wing? I'm on the fence. For a long time, I thought it was this one. But now, I'm thinking, well, the Town 6 one was very good. I like the new ones as well. So, I don't know. Anywho, that is it to my comparison of these sets, and that is it to my entire weekend of crazy um, videos. Because by the way, if you're unaware, I'm recording this on the weekend, like of uh, March. Like, this is mid March when I'm doing this, okay? But I don't know when you'll be seeing this. I'm doing this right now because I'm going to make a stop motion. So I'm trying to stockpile videos, and ergo, I have no idea the sort of comments I've got for previous videos. If you're hating these comparisons, I have no idea at this point. But nonetheless. There you go. Thank you for watching all my comparisons and top tens and all this stuff. I've been trying to work like crazy to stockpile for stop motions. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time in another review, comparison. Jeez, I've been talking too much. Okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> Bye, troops. So I thank you guys for watching this comparison. I have no idea how long it was. What? Huh. All right, now this, now this comparison is almost definitely way too long. But now this comparison almost definitely is way too long. But now this comparison is, is almost now this comparison is almost definitely way too long. But still, I'm gonna try and power through this. So the X-wing. <gasps> Set number 9493 H8014 comes with 560 pieces and was retained for £50 or $60 in 2012. Gold Leader's Y Wing Starfighter, set number 9495 H8014 comes with 458 pieces and was retained for £50 or $50 back in 2012. The A Wing Starfighter, set number 75003 H7 to 12 comes with 177 pieces and was retained for £25 or $25 in 2013. And the B Wing, set number 75050 H8 to 14 comes with 448 pieces and was retained for £50 or $50 back in 2014. Ow. <laughs> that really hurt my throat. Nonetheless.